COVID-19 is spreading profusely. There are hundreds, even thousands of cases occurring each and every day. Here are some ways you can help stop the spread of this devastating virus. First, avoid sharing food and drink with others, even family members. Wear a mask to protect each other and cover your coughs and sneezes with a tissue. With the holidays being right around the corner, we all want to stay safe so we're able to stop this awful disease so we have a better 2021. 96% of adults go to work hungover the day after a holiday party. New Year's has the worst statistics with almost 58% of highway deaths being alcohol related. 40% of highway deaths during the holidays are alcohol related. This holiday, stay home, stay at a friend's or a family's house. Be safe this holiday season. Don't drink and drive. Welcome to No Outlet Live. This is the show that you hate the most on the North Coast by Lake Erie. We're off doing the best Christmas we can get. We're getting rain and crazy wind. I mean, it's like a hurricane style wind that we're getting up here. Yeah, we are hoping the windows in the studio will remain attached to the wall. And And the electricity and... I'm I'm keeping my toes and my fingers crossed right now. Yeah. um, That's another thing that I'm about to jump into a little bit is where this wind is coming from. We have got some serious uh, wind issues going on in the country right below Ohio because we're coming out of Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. Yeah. uh, Like... You know, Kentucky, you're lucky people really like the whiskey that comes out of you because it's the only reason they're tolerating the wind right now. Yeah, you could survive without it. This is No Outlet Live. You can find us on 
Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor. You can find us on Apple Podcasts. Go to your web browser and just put in No Outlet Live in one word. No Outlet Live. And a special shout out to our likely one listener from Bangladesh. We don't know how you found us, but thank you. Yeah, we're going to go over that in a little bit. Our, uh, <laughs> we have some good statistics coming back out of this show. And we are also brought to you by FlathousePress.com. Don't forget to get in your purchase before the end of the year. And if you use promo code no outlet on their website, you will be able to get 15% off on your purchase. And also, don't forget Guardian Roadside Solutions. If you're trying right now, they're offering to get your car detailed, and I really think I need my car detailed badly. And if and if the wind gets bad enough, uh, can they help you find your car? <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. It's not going to be strong enough to blow over parked cars. We hope. God, I hope. You know, this wind is pretty wild. It, it could probably blow over your car. Oh, yeah. It's like that, that rock tied to a string that it says redneck uh, weather forecasting kit. Uh, if rock wet, raining. If rock dry, sunny. Rock gone, <laughs> tornado. So I actually have a story that I'm going to pull up right here. Uh, let me switch over so our our listeners can see what's going on here. Oh, man, now I think I lost it. Hold up. Right here. This is what's going on in Kentucky due to the wind. We are nearing the end of the most severe tornado event in Kentucky's history. Multiple tornadoes have touched down and we have damage in I believe over a dozen Kentucky counties. The primary tornado was on the ground continuously for over 200 miles in our state, something we have never seen before. We have deaths in multiple, possibly many counties. The hardest hit county appears to be Graves, where the city of Mayfield has been devastated. Sitting here today, and this is before daybreak, we believe our death toll from this event uh, will exceed 50 Kentuckians, probably end up closer to 70 to 100 lost lives. Oh Remember, my God. Each of these are children of God, irreplaceable to their families, and to their communities. But we will make it through this. We will rebuild. It's really sad what they have going on in Kentucky. So the wind has created level 5 tornadoes um, right below this state. And right now we're getting like the backlash of that up here by the lake. Yeah, fortunately, now to put it in perspective for our listeners uh, that might not be from Ohio, fortunately we are approximately uh three-hour drive from the Ohio-Kentucky line. Yeah, it's not that far, and right now we're... I, I could hear the wind just whipping well, outside right now. It's far enough that we're not getting the worst of it. I mean, it's really sad that these people are going through this. A hundred people in some town died. Yeah. Let's look at uh this Tell video. What it, what it looks like across here. Uh, here is aerial video of the path of the tornado... And what it did to the to, to Bowling look at Green, this. and this is just, just decimated a portion. Now, as you look at the uh, as you look at the video, you can look down. You clearly see the path of the tornado. These houses the kind of look like some of them look like they're like trailer houses. Wow! Look, just as as far Maybe as not. you can go. It's it's unbelievable, unbelievable. We do know. Dude, tornadoes are scary. People, so some people, maybe more. So some people moved to a new address but kept the same house. Uh, a short distance from here, that had uh, the roof caved in. We believe there may have been people working there, similar to what they had down in Mayfield. It's not unusual on a Friday night, people could be working a second shift. That's what's going on here. This is a day of assessing and securing, and that's what's going on in this neighborhood here. Just oh my. right around here. 36 homes have been lost. 
And I would say just 36 from, homes. You saw just a small just portion destroyed. of the video. We'll have more tonight at 11. Now, when uh, it comes to stuff like this, I would say for like, have you ever been in a wild? Oh, the everybody didn't even see that. Oh, hold on. <laughs> so I had it, the camera just on me. You have to see this destruction that's here on this feed. I mean, this is crazy what they have going on here. If you look in the background, I mean, this neighborhood is just destroyed. Anthony, how, how, what would you do in in the moment of having a tornado rip through your neighborhood? Uh, seek shelter. Let yeah. me find another one of these The irony videos. is I'm supposed to know a lot more about this. I kind of have it a degree in emergency management. Well, he's driving like a lawnmower with a wagon and a little small dog. Hold on. Did you see this little dog over here? Well, it's just like a disaster movie, except the dog. Look at this little dog. Oh, <laughs> he's a tiny little guy. Look at him. This is a little guy, but he's rolling with the he doesn't know. with the survivors, man. He survived. He doesn't know what's going on, but as long as the, his human's with him, he feels okay. Yeah, he's a survivor. Look at this poor guy. Okay, he lost everything gonna, to tornadoes. My tears might short circuit the microphone. Man. Look at this. It looks like a zombie movie over there. Or down there. Yeah. That's really sad. What? <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. I don't even know how I'd feel about tornadoes really ripping through where I live, I don't know how I'd react to that. I don't have a basement in this house. How would we survive if a tornado just ripped us to pieces in the air? Uh, right now, in this scenario, say the tornado came, is coming in the middle of this podcast. Well, neither of us are flexible enough to kiss our asses goodbye. <laughs> I, I would have no choice at that point. Yeah, uh, you're. It would be like an incoming nuclear blast. You're fucked. I mean, you're just kind of screwed. What would we do right now if that happened? Uh, I might hide in that little closet there. It would. It would give give me the illusion that I was doing something like these. Like back during in the fifties, at the height of the Cold War, there were these DIY bomb shelters people could build in their backyards, and I'm like, I'm like, and they think people are stupid today. They and they yet they were naive enough to believe that something they could do themselves could protect from a nuclear blast. Like, yeah, uh, there's no way to survive that. The roaches survived that one, but a tornado, we could probably like. I bet you one of these houses around here have a basement. I would seriously just, I would have to yoke you. I would grab you and Danielle, and we'd all run through each house down the block till we find the one with a basement. I would grab Dexter. Oh, my God. I forgot my dog, didn't I? I wouldn't grab The one Dexter. in my portrait back here. I'd be like, come on, Dex. Come on, boy. And, you know, that's the thing my my teacher pointed out in disaster and film and media class, that no matter how bad it is in a disaster movie, the dog always survives. And I am completely okay with that. So, besides uh, death and tornadoes and imminent uh, devastation, No Outlet Live has just entered the Powerball. Sound effect. Sound effect. I'm sorry, were you trying to... Yeah, except hopefully we'll have better results than that math teacher we call Miss Sakatoa. <laughs> yeah, she's she's showing up for the Indian casinos. But actually, we... actually, they, actually, I think somebody should hire her as a publicity stunt. Like the, like the owner of that St. Louis Browns baseball team when he hired a midget for one game oh you know what speaking of that i was doing christmas shopping 
and I saw that all of the stores out here in Cleveland, they officially have changed all of the gear for Cleveland baseball to Guardians. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we are no longer allowed to be Indians no more. And I dislike that. And that's why I have the starter jacket just behind you on on the show because are you planning on selling it on ebay for an outrageous markup in a couple decades <laughs> yes if you want the no outlet live indians throwback that's the throwback starter jacket pullover you know i once bought my friend a uh, this is a friend i don't speak to anymore for a lengthy list of reasons I gave him a Chris Benoit action figure. For I hope there's a special spot in hell for Vince McMahon. Yeah, you remember him, right? Yes. Yeah, so three years later when Chris Benoit did what he's infamous for, I just said, okay, um, if you want to sell that figure on eBay or something, I'm fine, but I, I want a cut. Oh, you're trying to get your cut. You said, ain't no cheese coming out of this city until it's in my pocket. Something like that. I mean, I f- yeah, Chris Benoit murdered his wife and son and then killed himself. But I figure people pay f- money for prison artwork made by Charles Manson. So, you know, merchandise bearing the likeness of a double murderer you know, shouldn't. I mean, that is, that was a crazy story when that happened. Yeah, and, and get, you'll, you'll never guess what the, w- you remember what the WWE did in the, in the weeks afterwards? I think they made a special I hope there's spot. A special spot in hell for Vince McMahon. Yeah, uh, they they removed like in, in future like DVDs. They referred to his career making match at WrestleMania 20, at, at, which was a triple threat between him and Triple H and HBK. No, they referred to that as just a match between Triple H and HBK. What? Yeah, and. In create your own wrestler mode in the next video game. They, no. They, they removed his finisher, the Crippler Crossface. You can't do that. You can't just decimate his whole history because he killed his wife and his kids. Yeah, well, what can I say? Apparently there was a, apparently there was a point WWE considered to be going too far. <laughs> it seemed like it was going pretty far at that point. Yeah. Uh... Anyway, on to a more pleasant... Is that a midget or a child? Actually, uh, as far as I can tell... No, well, actually, I did mention a story involving a midget <laughs> a minute ago. Yeah, there's... back Way back in the day in Major League Baseball, back when there was a St. Louis Browns baseball... Oh, St. Louis Browns! Yeah. I, I don't remember which team they became, but anyway, their, their owner, Bill Veck, was kind of a nut... He actually hired a midget to play on their team. Briefly. Is that a midget or a child? Yeah, his name. He was three. His name was Eddie Goodell. He was three feet tall. <laughs> Eddie Goodell, the midget. Yeah, and he he played exactly one at bat where he was walked, and the number on the back of his jersey was three eighths. <laughs> so, I just wanted to double check. What you were just speaking to me, and I think I found him. Oh, what is this? Uh, Wikipedia asking for money. Edward Carl Goodell. G-A-E-D-E-L. Okay, let me look at this photo. This looks like him up to bat. This is a midget that played bas- or baseball? Yes. That is his entire career right there. He, is that one swing? No, he didn't even swing because Bill Vec told him that he had a rifleman on the roof who would shoot him if he swung. Wow. I mean, you think about it, a guy crazy enough to hire a midget to play on his team is also it would also <laughs> be that would also be believable coming from him. So I I think it's still unknown as to whether that statement was true but I can see why he wouldn't want to take any chances. Is that a midget or a child? (laughs) It does look like a child right there. That is pretty crazy. Eddie Godell. He uh, gained recognition in the second game of a St. Louis Browns doubleheader on August 19th, 
1951, weighing 60 pounds and standing 3 feet and 7 inches tall. <laughs> oh my lord. He became the shortest player in the history of the major leagues. Goodell made a single plate appearance when he walked with four consecutive balls before being replaced by a pitch runner at first base. His jersey bearing the uniform number one eighth is displayed in <laughs> what <are> they... <laughs> they gave the number one eighth. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it's like <laughs> like Doctor Evil, we made you a clone. He's exactly like you in every way. Except one-eighth your size. Oh my god. They gave him the one-eighth number. That is so rude. <laughs> like I said, it was a publicity stunt, so he milked it for all it was worth. <laughs> they told him he's one-eighth of a human. <laughs> he wore it proudly, too. Yeah, and apparently they didn't even let him keep it. Oh no. Hold on. Let me, let me jump into this a little more. He was, by golly, the best darn midget who ever played big league baseball. He also was the only one. Wow. So what a what a history that this man lived. He uh <laughs> he goes down in the record books. I mean he really is a legend. I'm so happy that you know um references and stories like this. This is so good, Anthony. You know, I think that... Wait a minute, that game was in St. Louis. Oh, it might even be the same stadium where one a later St. Louis Cardinals player broke a Major League Baseball record. And what record was that? Two Grand Slam home runs in the same inning. Oh, this dude was just smashing them. Yeah, I... Like, roughly only a dozen other Major League players managed two in the same game. Yeah, dude, that's sick. And, and, but this good... Dude, I, I can't get over this Goodell thing. He, like, broke records, and he didn't really do nothing. They walked him. And then he didn't even have to run the bases. <laughs> exactly. They threw four balls, but this dude was three feet playing Major League Baseball. Yeah, I bet. Do you think that could fly today? Uh, well, if nothing else, I think the Major League Baseball Players Union would throw a major fit. The Major League Baseball players are massive. Those are gigantic men. I know, but I don't mean like the players themselves. I mean their union officials. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> because here's the thing. Like, there, there's an official number for how many players a team can have on a roster and thus can be in uniform at in the stadium in any one game. And so to put to do this stunt today that would mean they would have to cut or demote to the minor leagues a regular sized MLB player. Right. So right. his union would be like what the fuck you're firing you're demoting this guy so that you can put a fucking no, midget no. at bat. Is that a midget or a child? And, and then, and, and then there would be all the, um, if there's an organization that fights for the rights of, I believe they're called little persons. Is that a midget or a child? You can bet they would have uh, something to say about <laughs> this. <laughs> Actually, a guy, an owner could probably get the same publicity just by pretending he was going to do this. That dude doesn't look white. <laughs> like, th they could have a press conference where, like, they, they could have the guy s literally stand on the podium in front of him and be like, I, I want a special spot in hell for Vince McMahon. I want, I want to announce our latest draft pick, this guy, and then they could have, they could have him, like, wearing a, a Major League Baseball like a jersey from the team, but it's like bigger than he is, so like he's got it all, but you can't see his face. And and then once once all the publicity got peaked, the owner could be like, "I'm just kidding. I wasn't really gonna do that." Okay, so we're starting to get close to where I need to take a break because I got a nice interview lined up for this episode. I got to reconfirm everything and get everything prepared. But I did have videos. Usually, I start this show lately with. 
some good videos for you to watch. We went through a little bit of tornado. We're using the term good generously. <laughs> oh, you don't think my videos are that good? Oh, they're not bad videos. They're just interesting. <laughs> and I am... What the fuck was that? Yeah, that is often my reaction. So, yeah, good job. I know it that. is. I actually got some of that... Uh, what the fuck was that? ...style videos coming for you right after... We have our interview. Let me line some stuff up, and we'll be right back after this quick break. This is No Outlet Live, baby. Buddy Addison's here to make sweet, sweet love to your ears whenever the fuck I feel like it. Tune in to CBW, and maybe if you're lucky, I'll be on. Or just invite me over for a good time. <laughs> we'll warn you right now things may get a little fucked up and crazy what's even worse is i had a kid come in and i was shitting in the urinal and he came in and he's like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> but if that's something you're into then mics and men is the show for you the boys are gonna cover it all without holding back you're gonna laugh you're gonna cry and you could learn a thing or two it's Mikes and Men, only on CBW. Have you ever wondered where to get the hands-on training to be on the radio or even on the news? Ohio Media School. Take the quiz online on the website beyondair.com to see if media broadcasting is the right field for you. Learn by doing is the school style. We know there is no substitute for operating the tools of broadcasting under the direction of broadcast professionals. The classes and studio sessions are run with the same professional informality that is found throughout the broadcast industry. Ohio Media School, 216-503-5900 or visit the campus at 9885 Rockside Road, Independence, Ohio. Ohio Media School, where broadcasting dreams become reality.
What's up? Jay Remy here, host of No Outlet Live. Are you considering or curious about how you could start your own podcast? Join Anchor. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast for free. Monetize your podcast, one-click distribution, record from anywhere on the app, and they have unlimited free hosting. Download Anchor on the App Store or Google Play. Anchor, podcasting made easy. It's that time of year again. The snow is getting ready to fall, and you're going to need a plow man to get you to the winter. Call Gifted Hands Landscaping. They handle all your lawn and snow care needs. Services include gutter cleaning, snow removal, leaf pickup, weed pickup, and more. Call or take at 216-925-8473 to receive a free quote. Don't wait until the last minute. This is Cleveland. The snow is coming whether you like it or not. Again, that number is 216-925-8473. Gifted Hands Landscaping. The Education of Jazz, with your host, Hakeem H., bringing you the absolute best for your listening pleasure in America's only true art form of music. I'll be playing your favorites each day, everything from Duke, Coltrane, Julian Cannonball Adderley, to George Duke, Bob James, Kenny G., and so many more. We'll have guest artists to interview locally and national artists and even a live call-in from you, the audience. Tune in daily from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. to unwind your day for the education of jazz. I finished my cigarette as we head out from the bar. Yeah, I count the number of mistakes made by my scars. Lastly, falls and no one notices. Fleeting love dies with the lotuses. Yeah, I tend to get so homesick that it hurts. Yeah, I love this place, but it's the fucking worst. If home is where the heart is, then this home needs some repairs. Rip the walls and strip the floors completely bare. Because people are piranhas We fiend for flesh and hearts Yo. When someone good, sinks their teeth Deep inside of you They'll tear you apart No outlet, but I need to charge my phone No outlet live This is no Outlet Live brought to you by Guardian Roadside Solutions at FlathousePress.com It's your favorite host on the North Coast Jay Remy uh, accompanied by Anthony Miano Yeah, that was mostly because Jeremy was wondering if the person responding to him on his show was actually here, just a voice in his head So to remove all doubt, he brought me on the show <laughs> Yeah, to remove all of that doubt now who i have on right now is a guy that i met through a friend now andrew eminger right is that how you pronounce yes, your name right yes sir so andrew eminger he has a construction business and i met him through one of my buddies and he happened to be uh one of the security guards for dmx ain't that correct well, no, nah, it's it's a little different. So I was a road manager, and we have security. What I do is I, I protect privacy. So my relationship with the with the guys that I deal with, the celebrities, is a little bit different uh, because security is to stop a, a threat that is, like, immediate. What I do is we foreplan, and I hold the cell phone. I have the list. I have who they want to talk to. And if you're not on that list, you can't get near them. And uh, it's like the last line of defense. So they, they can, you know, enjoy their privacy. So did you I, ever have privacy more than, did you uh, ever get into a confrontation in the middle of uh, doing this job? I mean, always, but my, my art, I mean, I call it the art of noise. You know, my job would be to just simply, you know, create a conversation in the midst of, you know, whatever crazy environment, which gives the security enough time to get 
my my celebrity away from the situation. So I basically run my mouth until uh, everybody disappears, and it's just me and whoever this fool was trying to start something, and you know, <laughs> problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> so what was? Did anything really funny ever stick out that happened while on tour with DMX? I mean, we laughed constantly, but you got to understand that um, me and DMX traveled in one SUV and security traveled in another. So um, based on, you know, just the normal course of, of drinking and smoking, uh, you know, a lot of those moments that we cry laughing at kind of <laughs> get forgotten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean... How did we, um, we've had with, when with X? Go ahead. When he passed away, that that had to affect you in a a different way, right? Because you've been around this man when he was doing his thing. Yeah, um, it, it still does. It still does every day. Uh, even when we weren't touring, when we weren't on the road, we were constantly in touch. We spent time together outside of the tours. I mean, we were really friends. And um, just the outpouring of love from other celebrities, from Rough Rider sets all over the world. Um, I mean, my phone kept ringing and ringing and ringing. And what really hurts me about X is that, I mean, he he had plans that were that were really righteous. Um, he wanted to, to affect his community. He was looking at a 150-year-old church in the Bronx that was huge. It was a cathedral, and he wanted to start his own church. He wanted to preach. He he wanted to, you know, be away from dope and be away from, you know, all the things that had set his life back. Oh, and man, that's crazy. Art. And, and the world will never know it. The world will never know it. We were in the midst of that project, man, when he passed. Is and, Do you know if that project is still continuing to move forward at this moment? It's not. No, it's not. It was all. It all revolved around him as the head of it. Him as the pastor. Him as the the preacher. You know how like on all of his albums, and before and after all of his shows, he would he would say a prayer, whether it was one from an album or one that he wanted his, you know, freestyle, and uh, that was what he really loved. That was DMX. Oh man, um, he understood that his talent is what provided for him, but his true love was, you know, the church. And, and what it did for his community. Yeah, he was a very religious fella. Now, I don't want to switch over too fast, but I got to ask you, man, you have a relationship with Dennis Rodman, correct? Dennis is one of my best friends in the world, and I'm actually about to be with him uh, tonight in a couple hours. Oh, man, because right now I'm on your Facebook, and I'm going through, like, you, somehow you're just around celebrities all the time. So I'm looking at this more recent picture. You're with Bernie Kozar and uh, Baker Mayfield at the baseball game. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was supposed to play in Jarvis Landry's celebrity softball game, um, but I actually had a had to have a, a minor little neck surgery to fix the disc. Oh, so, so you I couldn't, couldn't play. I was still I was still on the field, but. Baker and I have become really good friends. Um, and with the, in the celebrity world, man, I've been around Dennis for 25 years on a, almost a daily basis. And uh, For everyone you know, watching this so show, cool. this is a picture I have up right now with uh, Andrew hanging out with Dennis Rodman. I mean, when I met you, you brought this was like one of the things you, you brought up. Hey, I'm like cool with Dennis Rodman. We tried to call DMX when I was with you the last time we hung out. Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be wild. Yep. Now, how do you how are you so intertwined into the celebrity world? Well, so I I played college football and I I mean I had like 5 minutes in the NFL and in that oh. 5 minutes I met a guy nicknamed Floyd Raglan in uh 2000. And Floyd just happened to be he used to be a Miami Dolphin and that's who picked me up. And uh after I got signed with Miami, Floyd was my agent. And I never knew him. Like, he got suggested to me. And so Floyd kind of took me under his wing. And I was hanging out in Miami. I'm 20 years old, and I got money. And so after Floyd got to know me and trust me a little bit, he's like, listen, man, I want you to meet one of my best friends. And he takes me out. And I'm a 20-year-old kid from Cleveland, and it's Dennis Rodman. And so instead oh, of... Oh, man. I, I, what made me successful is I sit back, and I try to understand before I react to anything. 
and I saw the way that everybody treated Dennis. Everybody wanted something. Everybody wanted a picture. Everybody wanted an autograph. Everybody wanted to say they were with Dennis on the tab. So I decided to just make it clear that, you know, I was paying my own tab, and I would get stuff for Dennis. Like, you good? But that was the that was the extent of the conversation. Oh, and that's and how you – that's real life. respect right there. Yeah, after like three months, you know, my phone rings one day, and it's Dennis. And he's like, yo, Floyd can't make it out tonight. Come get me. That's it. And that's where it started. <laughs> What has Dennis been up to lately? I mean, he's been he's been being a good boy, man. As for everybody out there that doesn't know, Dennis Dennis won't touch drugs. He never has. He never will. Um, you know, alcohol is a different story, but um, you know, Dennis is in a good place. Have you ever uh, talked to him about the Kim Jong Un stuff? That, that's what I wanted to bring up because I was about I, to chime I in. Was, he did I was something with even him more on the first than the first trip to North Korea, and it was. One of the dumbest decisions of my life. You didn't um, like it? It was a spur of the moment. No, nah, man. I, was, I didn't think I was coming home. Really? They treated him like royal treat. They, they treated me like I wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> oh, man. That's got to be so scary, dude. You know, it's been suggested. And that, right that... when we got to Old Boy's Palace, they separated us. So I didn't see Dennis for three days. Now, granted, it was like the Ritz-Carlton. They put me up in like a 3,000-square-foot suite, but no electrical outlets, no windows. I'm like, what? I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm done, dude. You are but one got... strong-minded fella to go they, out there to did, do that. Did they physically confine you to that room the whole three days, or did they did they put food through a <laughs> slot in the door? No, they would send people in to give. It was me and his bodyguard, Elkin King, and uh, I mean, they would send people in, and to me and Elkin, we started messing with them because they would they would ignore us, like no matter what we did. So Elk was like, yo, when we hear the door, just get ass out and just stand there like, what's up? <laughs> like, I, I see you brought the food, but what's up with it? Like, yes. Time, you know, like, fuck it. If we're here, let's let's get each, let's at least catch a charge, you know, if we're going to be locked up. Yeah, you know, so, it's like there's no why. You know, it's been suggested and that then, maybe Rodman was treated like royalty because Kim Jong-un might not have been able to tell him apart from President Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, know, I'll tell you what, I have pictures of um, Kim Jong-un that uh, when he, he actually went to school in the U.S. He went to, to whatever they call primary school, like elementary Kim Jong-un school did? here in the U.S. Yeah. What? And that's what made him a huge Chicago Bulls fan. He has pictures wearing a, a Rodman jersey in 96, 97 with a, you know, like playing outside in the, in the U.S. Like crazy. Stop it. And when... Uh, and this is it, man. This is information that never got released to anybody anywhere. When Trump was at in North Korea to stand at the line, the DMZ or whatever, um, underneath Kim Jong Un's dress clothes, he was wearing a Rodman jersey because Dennis was a big part of setting that up. Even though, you know, the bullshit ass woke news don't want to tell you that. Yeah, that's Dennis, wild, you know, bro. I never pictured him or any other NBA player, for that matter, as a diplomat. <laughs> I mean, this is a No Outlet Live exclusive right here. Yep. Brought to you by Andrew well, Eminger, I, my man. And this this blows my I'll stories you, about LeBron what, James. Out there's a, I would love to talk about, I would love to write a book about the time in North Korea because for a day and a half of it, I got to, you know, be with Dennis and Kim Jong-un wandering around and looking at things after they came and got us. But the wonderful United States government has warned me about doing such. <laughs> oh, really? Did yeah. they use words because... like national security? Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's anything that has anything to do with national security. I now, what you seen out there security. was was just really foul, and they don't want you to spread that. I mean, yes and no. I heard that I mean that it, North it, Korea it, is it, pretty it, gutter. It is. Oh, man, that's all it is, except for where this dude is. I mean, the little things I can tell you is that in their international airport, it looks abandoned. It looks like a plane hasn't come into that, that place in forever. And if it does, you're in, like, blinking fluorescent lights and dusty-ass bullshit. But where he lands in that terminal is white marble and fucking Bengal tigers, and oh, nobody man. else gets to use it but him. <laughs> and that's oh, basically, that basically tells you about the... The whole country. Yeah, that's but wild. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about it when, not on the air. But yeah, the next I'll time we hang later. out, bro, we should uh, link up. Now, let me ask you about 
Um, what do you have going on with Dennis later on? What are you guys doing again at dinner or something? Oh, uh, we got a we got a dinner, and then uh, we're going to uh, an event for uh, Warren Henry Exotics in South Florida. Um, here in Orlando, the dealership down in South Florida. Oh, um, you're you're about to get some sweet cars. Nah, it's just um, Floyd's a partner in the dealership, and uh, you know, we're just doing a get together with some of these some of these whales, um, just making a little dinner appearance and you know cocktails. We really don't do nightclubs in that anymore. It's more like, which I like, man. The nightclubs get get old. But yeah, the adult yeah, life, like, man. It get you get comfortable with it, right? Yeah, but it eats you alive, dude. After a while. Now I saw that your is, son. You know. I saw your son join the military. Yep, that boy's in the U.S. Air Force protecting us. He's over in Qatar right now, and uh, he'll be home in March. What is his job doing the in the Air Force? He's a crew chief on a C-130, oh, and when man. he gets back in March, he's actually uh, he has a four-year stint at the air force academy he qualified for so i'm very proud of that boy he's uh oh wow he's gonna come out of the academy he's already a, a pilot but he's not in the air force um so he's so he'll a be coming out candidate right now and uh going through all the classes at the air force and he's either gonna be flying uh fighter jets or the uh c-130s and c5s dude that is so cool he's gonna be like top gun man i told him i said look man you know i got some wild cars i said look I let you whip any of these cars anytime you want. I know they track that, but I'm gonna need to fly that F-16 just one time. <laughs> yeah, dude, just let me jump in there one time. Hey, they, he, <laughs> if if he asks the right people, they might actually let him take you up in a plane. So, so it... well, so me and Dennis have been asked multiple. We got so many military friends, and we love the military community. And anytime we do anything involving the military, they're always like, "Hey, man, we'll take you up in F-16. We'll take both of you in the tandems." And uh. Dennis just don't fit. They don't make one. And what's Dennis a tandem? A, a, they've got two seat F sixteens for oh, training. Oh man! So that's like but the like that's the Hornet, isn't it? What Falcon fighting Falcon? No, no the F sixteen dude is 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 like the beast. Oh the, man, I that's like F-18 some serious F-18. fighter jet stuff. Yeah, and I mean. <laughs> So I don't know if you heard this at all, because I, I mean I don't I don't really pay attention to the news because there's so much bullshit out there and from being around Dennis for so many years. It's always I, fake, I dude. I've come to bullshit. the realization myself that when you watch uh, mainstream news, you're not getting good stuff. You have to actually research to get any good news anymore. Well, I'm like just from being around Dennis and seeing things that happen. And then hearing about it on TMZ or something else, I'm like, dude, that's not even close, man. This is bullshit. So I just, I lost faith in it. But Dennis was in talks with Elon Musk for uh, when Musk goes up on uh, to do his his thing, whatever. To he's gonna go, go in space. space. Dennis wants to go with him, dude. But Dennis Rodman thing. needs to go to space, dude, for real. No, no. but Elon doesn't want him to go. You know why? Because Dennis was like, look, man. What better way to cap off my life than to die in outer space? And Elon's oh, like, hold on, dog. Man. That's not the point. And so Dennis is like, no, nah, man, I'm going to be up there pressing buttons and pulling cords. Man, this yeah. is where I need to go. And he was like, look, man, you can't go. <laughs> yeah, Dude, no way. Smart move, Elon. <laughs> that is the coolest way to die. He is right. I mean, well, how do you expect Dennis Rodman to die? That's, I mean, that, there it is. So it's gonna so, be something we it, knowing it, it'll probably be something we can't imagine right now. Like he will find his death will be the kind of story that just wouldn't be believable in a movie. Andy, I gotta tell you, on yeah. last week's yeah. episode of No Outlet Live, me and my co host Anthony Miano, we, we talked about um voluntary um death. Where there's companies that will uh volu- if you want to die, they will give it to you, but you gotta fill out all this paperwork. Why don't they just do that with Dennis? If he wants to die in space, fill out a bunch of paperwork, get your assets together and your will, and let them uh, let them put you away in space, dude. That's so cool. I mean, I feel like Dennis's vision of it is more like being tied to a firework. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> firework. Or he doesn't like Elon Musk wants to go to space and come back. That'd be yeah. like, no, man. What? Why well, I want to come back from space, dude? Like that? Yeah, 
let's, <laughs> let's cue the Carrie Perry or Katy Perry. Yeah, yeah, him <laughs> blasting up, being like, or, or he could, or you ever seen that, that old movie Doctor Strange Love with the scene where like they're they're trying to drop the bomb, but the bomb won't release, so the one guy has to get in there and like work with it manually, and he rides the atomic bomb all the way to the ground, <laughs> waving his hat, waving a cowboy hat, like, yeah. woohoo! <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's that's the truth, and I mean just to tell you, and I don't know like anybody listening, so Dennis wasn't designed to become what he is. He dyed his hair and got tattoos and did crazy shit because he has social anxiety and he wanted to push people away, but it made him a fucking rock star instead. My bad. Oh, that that. makes so much sense. I gotta say, playing it was an accident. Has he spoke so, to you about the the Michael Jordan documentary on HBO? Yeah, it was a big part of it. I had to drive in all these interviews and got to sit there, man. I got I got Dennis and Jordan stories that can make that make you cry laughing. Because Jordan I mean, really kind of uh, put on for Dennis and like his original crew, and he was also it it made a Jordan look like he was a jerk a lot. No, I mean, you got to think about it like this. Like, if you work with somebody every single day, you're going to butt heads. Yeah. And that's just what they decided to focus on. But those two wouldn't have had the success that they had if that was the truth. You know what I'm saying? A locker room needs to have continuity. It needs to have chemistry. You 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 can't win when you got 12 men and five of them hate each other. So, I mean, right, just right. like we just said about news, it's, it's bull. It is, I mean, you get fed what you get fed. I mean, I, I see Jordan all the time with Dennis. Every time Jordan throws a private event at his home in Jupiter, Florida, we get invited. I play poker with the dude. Oh, you? I mean, no, you, me, you did not gamble with Jordan. Dude, I got to play in Aventura, Florida in a private cigar bar. Uh, we did a, a cash game. Stop it. And Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks is at the table. Jerry Stiller, Ben Stiller, this is like 10 years ago. Jordan, all in there just smoking cigars in his back room. And I got to, I got to play in that game. Okay, that sounds like the Stiller, setup dude, for a comedy. The, the character, like on uh, The King of Queens, he's not acting. That's that dude. That's how he acts, man, and it's hilarious. I've got to rest his soul, man. That, You're talking that about the, the father? Really acted like that. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah, so how much money was in this game? Off. Uh the biggest pot was like twenty five thousand cash. Oh my God! You playing in the big boy games? I'm about to go downtown in about a week. I have reservations at a hotel, and I'm about to go to Jack's, <laughs> and I want to, for my first time, jump into a real poker table, and I'm kind of scared because I don't know the lingo, and I'm a little worried man, about it. You You're talking about twenty five thousand dollar games. Man. Don't start downtown. You know what I mean? You'll get ate up. Am I going to get ate up? You're going to get, they're going to, whatever you buy in for, you might as well just kiss that shit goodbye because beginner's luck don't don't matter in that type of game. I I think, I know how to play poker, but I just, I don't know the lingo at a professional table. Even if you did, it probably wouldn't help you. (laughs) But here's the thing. A lot of the lingo is similar, but it's like, if you hang out in the hood in Memphis or you hang out in the hood in Cleveland, you you understand, but the lingo is different. So just like anything in life, it, it it's like you get it, but you got to kind of just figure I it out. I didn't expect go. this from you. I wanted you to give me like the good luck talk. And you're like, you're like, dude, don't even gamble down there because you suck. <laughs> <laughs> also, I should be what. stepping in you to know, prevent dude, this. Because... You, you take half the money you were going to gamble. You come meet up with me. I'm gonna punch you in the stomach and take it. <laughs> that way, you know, at least you know what time it is, and you lose half the amount. You know what? <laughs> My girl probably approves of that message. Or she might just or, ask man, me to do it. Let's call Mike here. and a couple of our, our boys and have just a garage <laughs> game, man, and just get your feet wet. Hey, can we do that? Let's set this up, dude. I would love to meet up with. You and Mike, let's play a garage game of some poker. Man, and you haven't even seen my garage. It is dope, and it's like it's like Celebrity Central. All from twenty years of being around 
Rodman and Pearl Jam and Den- Donald Trump and Dennis and DMX and the Jersey Dude, Shore. And like all of that stuff is on the walls. Let's set up this game. And I, I got about, I, I could bring about $300. Can we set up like a $300 game? Yeah, we can do that. That'd be, man, I, we can fill that table quick. Dude, I would love to do that. Uh, I really appreciate you coming in for this interview. Anthony, you got any more words? Uh, yeah, it was nice meeting you, Andrew. Hope to hear hear more from you in the future. Yes, sir. Call me anytime, boy. Yes, sir. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's Hearing from you every time since I met you has been really great. And I'm definitely going to call you back in later on in after uh, – we get into 2022, and I want to hear about this dinner with uh, Dennis. I want to hear more about what he's got going on in his life. Well, then I'll tell you what. Um, I'll get you the info, and you and, and Anthony, I'll sneak you in. But for the, for the All-Star game in Cleveland, I got Dennis in town for the 75th anniversary team of the NBA. And Stop it. I'm, I'm doing my thing for Rick Ross that weekend. Dude, so what are you Rick doing Ross for Rick? The same thing I do for Dennis and DMX. They give oh. me a list, and I keep him private. That's I'm with them 24/7. awesome. Check this out. Anybody you. that's listening, for everybody listening and watching, this is Andrew Eminger. You can find him on wherever. Just look him up. I. Uh, how's your construction business? You you are a business owner also. Man, that thing's off the hook. I started oh. that just to stay busy, and now it turned into something that's just out of control. COVID didn't hurt your business at all? No, no, man. It's, it's, it's over the commercial. I'm doing, you know, projects for Browns players. Uh, I'm doing commercial construction on a big level. It's, man, it's stressful, but, I mean, I had to, I can't do the celebrity thing full time. I, I just can't, man. I got a family. I got a wife that I love. And, I mean, bless her, man. She She's a, a practitioner for the VA. She takes care of our veterans, so. I want to stay close to home, but when when events pop up that I just can't say no to, you know, three, four times a year, I got Rick Ross coming. I'm going to Europe with Pearl Jam this summer. So, I mean, I, I keep my toe in the pool, you know. Man, that's awesome. It was so great to hear from you, Andy. And uh, just to inform you, I got a, a a comment on Facebook, actually from my girl. She does approve and you punching me in the stomach <laughs> instead of uh, gambling downtown. <laughs> I will definitely be in contact with you and have a great rest of your night. Thank you for joining us on No Outlet Live, my man. No problem, brother. I'll talk to you soon, man. Yes, sir. And we'll be back right after this. Don't forget that this show is brought to you by FlathousePress.com. If you go right now and get some... Uh, if you're late shopping for your Christmas gifts, flathousepress.com promo code no outlet will get you 15% off on some fun stuff out of their website. Off of your purchase, you can get 15% off. And did you have some, Anthony? No, I was just pointing at the no, at the bottom of the screen like you were at the. At the oh, I didn't know you were like you. <laughs> it was like a monkey see, monkey do thing. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Like, I mean, I have said being around you reduces my IQ level, so yeah, way to hit hit the nail on the head. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of recap after this quick break, and then we'll me and you need to recap this interview, and then we will also get into the news, because you sent in some news, and we'll be back right after this quick break. Profusely, there are hundreds, even thousands of cases occurring each and every day. Here are some ways you can help stop the spread of this devastating virus. First, avoid sharing food and drink with others, even family members. Wear a mask to protect each other and cover your coughs and sneezes with a tissue. With the holidays being right around the corner, we all want to stay safe so we're able to stop this awful disease so we have a better 2021. 96% of adults go to work hungover the day after a holiday party. New Year's has the worst statistics with almost 58% of highway deaths being alcohol related. 40% of highway deaths during the holidays are alcohol related. This holiday, stay home, stay out of friends or a family's house. 
Be safe this holiday season. Don't drink and drive. No Outlet Live. I hate telling it to you guys, but I gotta let everybody know that you can find us everywhere. Just go into your web browser and put in No Outlet Live in one word, and you'll really find this podcast anywhere that you prefer to listen. And, yeah, what can I say? We're a little bit like Jason Derulo. We like to name drop ourselves as much as possible. You you got to, because it's going to be a key word. No, I mean, this guy literally started off several of his hit singles with his own name. Like, Jason Derulo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I guess his manager or somebody that works with was like Jason that they, they recognize your voice by now. Okay, you can cut that out. I gotta ask you, how did you feel about that that interview with he did security with DMX, Andrew Eminger, we just had on the show, and also is like great friends with Dennis Rodman. Well, th- well, th- Mr. Eminger can say that. If he could use North Korea as a flex, he could be like, I've walked in places sane men won't go. Yeah, he definitely... That story about North Korea is crazy. Yeah, it's... He kind of like... Uh, I've seen a bunch of stuff, but you never could trust what you research. The internet's a lie. TV is a lie. But he I actually mean... went there and said North Korea... Is kind of what you've seen and researched. I mean, I trust the mainstream news a little bit more in that I don't think they completely make shit up. Does no. that make sense? Like, I do believe they are dependent on things actually happening. They don't, like, go out and cause events yeah, it's, to report on. It's a weird situation. Like, I don't know how it react. If I went into, like, 
when you say foreign country, you never really think that foreign, like blocked off from the rest of the world kind of foreign. Yeah, J- Japan did that voluntarily for hundreds of years, but then when they decided to open up, uh, they, they, they modernized quick. So we're going to talk, now that you say modernized, people that are getting up to date with what the rest of the world is doing, what about the opposite of that? Have you seen any instances of people living in civilization and then reverting back to being animals? If you mean have I witnessed it personally, no. I haven't witnessed it personally, neither. But our last episode had Mongolian throat singing. Yeah, which was, uh, sounded surprisingly good. Uh, and again... It was really good. Again, I want to emphasize, uh, I, I, I don't want that as in- interpreted as a microaggression. I just had no idea what Mongolian throat singing might sound like, since... The only time I'd even heard of it before was a joke on Fraser. It's an interesting thing, but after that episode, my sister contacted me and she told me that she lived with, or she knew a girl when she was growing up that was very normal in the middle of civilization. And she moved to a place as she got older called Slab City. Have you ever heard of Slab City? Uh, no, and I get the feeling, like North Korea, it's a place sane people won't go. Well, this, it kind of, so, let me just switch over so everybody can see what I'm about to show you. Um, Slab City is like a garbage heap in the middle of the desert, somewhere in California. And my sister used to know Jinxie Bonesaw. That's redundant to say, J. Remy, all of California is a garbage dump. Zing! (laughs) My apologies to the people of California. Hold on. If any of them are listening. This isn't even a good one. I gotta show you a good uh, uh, Jinxie Bonesaw video. And Mic check in the desert. And tell me just how you feel about this. Afternoon, beautiful, uh, hanging out in the afternoon, a beautiful, uh, sunny ass, uh, sunsetty fucking, uh, range. La 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 la. That's a girl, right? There. A video. I Thank barrel. you for saving me from having to ask the awkward question. Here it goes. Now, look at this. <laughs> okay, so, uh, why don't you tell us about Jinxie Bonesaw? So, Jinxie Bonesaw used to live in Cleveland, okay? And she had family problems. My sister knew her stepsister and is best friends with this lady's stepsister. Um, <laughs> she she had some problems out here, moved out west, moved into Slab City, ended up getting face tattoos all over like a like crazy weird tribal stuff. If you look over here by where I point my mouse... It looks like a lock hanging off Yeah, her there's a padlock going through her ear piercing. Um, and That's I think, a new one to me. I think these people are tweakers. I, I really don't know what's what's going on, but I've been so addicted to watching uh, Jinxie Bonesaw. So, hold on. She's waiting for her audience here. Oh, that's the one I was already in. Slab City with Gene C. Bonesaw. These people are like Mad Max, the movie. Kind, only a little more colorful. Yeah, and they're like, they live in like a garbage heap in the desert. Okay, I got it. That woman on the right, did she get... That's Jinxie. Horns, oh, are the horns like... Uh, I think they're implanted no, into her dreads right or her skull. <laughs> it's... Either one or the other. Because I didn't know that was, like, possible. That's the flippy camera thing. I mean, I've heard of it for, like, prosthetics for, like, movies, but where, but, like, they remove it at the end of the day. Well, when my sister informed me about these people, she said, uh, the horns thing threw me off. They're very musically talented. 
They like to play music out in the desert on this weird garbage oh, this uh, stage they a built out, out of like uh, 50 gallon drums. And so when the zombie would, apocalypse happens, they'll be totally unaware of it. That's how they live. Dude, Hold on. Rotate my device. Here we go. <laughs> so this here. is how they live in the like, kind of like the desert and the woods. This is bone saw right here, Jinxie bone saw. Why am I imagining some scary stories about how she acquired that name? It seems very scary, doesn't it? Jinxy bone saw. Bone saw is just a very <laughs> reminds me of that that ru that uh. Remember the wrestling scene from the first Spider Man? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, so that fictional wrestler played by Macho Man Randy Savage. Was You're talking called... about the Tobey Maguire version, yeah. right? Yeah, that <laughs> fictional wrestler. He, he, Peter took up a challenge. Three minutes in the ring for three thousand dollars against a wrestler Two called people. Bone Two Saw, and his fans in the stands had these like wooden saws that they would like make sawing motions with. To, to yeah. Hear. <laughs> now check out Jeeksy Bone Saw. She's doing a mic check right now. I think she's about to sing some fire. I mean, dude, I've been watching this stuff for a week and a half now since last episode, last Saturday. Trying to get a loop pedal. These things are like three hundred dollars. That shit's expensive. But seriously, check out what I can do. It looks like her video froze and not mine. So, just in case if you don't see movement. This yeah, is uh, uh, Jinxy Bonesaw on YouTube. If you look up Jinxy Bonesaw, you can find this this really cool lady. <laughs> we're not going to get in trouble for playing her music, are we? I don't think so. <coughs> I wonder why the the video froze. Actually, I've been having that problem with YouTube myself, where like the yeah the audio will continue, but the picture won't. I'm I'm tempted to call Spectrum and tear their head off. Because okay. I'm like, I so my sister is telling me to look up the video, the one where they say the rules of Slab City. Get it. Why do I have a feeling some of them involve the penalty of death? <laughs> yeah, I've seen too many Okay. Movies. Check out Slab City. This is it. Okay, so oh, this is a real official, like, video here. <clears throat> we have to wait until they're done talking. <laughs> Who the hell is that? <clears throat> Who is that? <laughs> Brian Worthy? Yeah. Who do you think you are? You walk up in my neighborhood. Are you coming to the range? Are you coming to the range? Yeah. Okay, good. You better. Fucker. Fucker. These fucking that's, tweakers. That's what, actually, that was. I hope you got all that because I was like. I did. Yeah, that's awesome. Because that, that's a perfect example. Like <laughs> we have we have fights and we have you know we have our disputes and all these other things and uh, some people shouldn't even be here at all. Some crazies don't mesh with other crazies, but uh, at the end of the day, like if you're a slabber. Then you know, or if you're a misfit, uh, like uh, if you're a slapper, you know, fit in the vagabond, we'll still respect you and we'll still at least love you, you know, like, and that's what I dig about it. Feels like a big family. This is Slab City in the middle, <laughs> the last free place on earth, is how they promote the it. The summer is a test of faith. Okay, a test of, of endurance, of, 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 of uh, uh, endurance, like, and p it makes people do stupid shit, like crazy shit, um, steal <laughs> water, steal food, like, Smoke yeah, math. Lots of, uh, like, <laughs> dries everything out, so fires are really, really easy. I, I fought fire, like, over there, is that how you say that? Yeah, it was, it was like right there, not this. There was a couple of trailers back there, and like, literally, I seen one of them on fire, and 15 seconds later, like, the whole camp was was just a blaze dude and there was it was hot let me like, pause this real quick so this girl right here on the screen she used to be a normal person <laughs> that lived in cleveland and now she lives in a garbage heap in the middle of the desert called slab city and they live like mad max the movie only 
I don't know, with or without the violence. I'm guessing without the violence. Now, look up GC Bonesaw on YouTube and look up. There's some of their videos where they're like smoking dabs. Okay, That's a uh, marijuana you. concentrate. Is that her real name? No, I'm not exactly sure if I remember her real name. I think it's Jennifer or something. Because she was a person before. I, yeah, I mean, she is now. She's just kind of a little. <laughs> A little extra of I a person. I, that's a th- fit, appearance-wise, yeah, but I gotta say, just from listening to her talk, she sounds normal, coherent, intelligent. But to just move regular life into the desert and live in, like, a garbage pile... Like, something must have happened. Something crazy happened. So let's look into more of this. Like, and I could feel the fire, like it was so hot. It was right there. It was literally right there. Like, so this devastation is like my next door neighbors, you know, it was not cool. So what she's talking about is when the fires happened in LA, you remember when uh, California was getting decimated with all of them uh, forest fires? Decimation is probably an understatement. Uh, California got really fucked up by them fires a well, couple years ago. That's the thing. The term decimation means to reduce by one-tenth, specifically. Oh. So, Well, she's talking about being able to see all these uh, crazy wildfires that happened a couple years ago. And she was able to see it from her desert garbage. In fact, they were set off by a gender reveal party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did everybody not learn instruments? You were supposed to learn instruments before you showed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> range is so many things. Like the range is my home. You know, the range is like my venue. The range is my stage. The range is my career. <laughs> Like my job, my duty, you know, to like the rest of the community here. You see that little like garbage puppy? Like kid, you know, I do. I am responsible. I'm like probably one of the more responsible people in Slab City, which is scary. Holy shit! <laughs> We're here. Don't badmouth the dog. Yeah, welcome to the range. You guys own this land, or no? No. Okay. No. Shh. It's pretty much it's an old military base. They sold it to California, and California owns it now, and they just don't ever kick us off. So, they live on a military a base. It's easy to play on because it is like, uh, and I uh, quote <laughs> myself, of course, because I'm awesome. Uh, the uh, It's like a, a cozy <laughs> womb of broken glass. The place where all the crazy people get together. <laughs> yeah, it is. Playing on street corners and stuff in front of other people, no one wants to listen to your music. They listen to you for maybe 13 <laughs> seconds, throw a dollar in your hat, if they even do that. But here, we don't boo people off stage. I want people to play music, you know? And this stage is exactly what that is. It's a stepping stone for people to play music. Dude, I'm the biggest fan of these people. I've been watching these people for weeks now. So tell me your story. What brought you out here in the first place? Like I said, I was I was a I was a uh, Marine wife, so I stayed on base. I was doing tattoos, and it was just like a non-fulfilling existence. You know, I was like bored all the time, and I smoked a shit ton of weed, and just tried to like forget that I was even a human being or a person, <laughs> just to try to float through life. And, and then she tried my gig. <laughs> and like finally before I was about to just f- snap, I came out to Slab City. I had like heard about it through a documentary or something that I don't remember. Yeah, we came out here and I fell in love with it. Came back That's out again, crazy. came back out again. And then the third time I just never left. Because I came out here, I came out here. Could you imagine seeing something online and then having the goal in you to just run out and think, you know, I'm you, Anthony Miano, you live in Akron. Right. So imagine that you you see something on the Internet and you're like, I'm just going to pack up and move to this random like desert garbage heap and I'm going to live there. Well, I did once prepare to do something like that. It was called going to Iraq, but that never happened. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. You just called all of Iraq a garbage heap. Well, I would have been in the middle of the desert and there would have and there was like no <laughs> trash collection service, so Yeah, it would not have been you, a very clean place. I'm s- You actually might be fully one hundred percent correct that it kind of is like joining 
the military in order to go to Afghanistan or Iraq. You're in the desert. It's a whole lot of nothing and garbage. And then weird people. <laughs> Which also would have been present if I'd gone to Iraq. Again, soldiers look less weird because of all the, you know, uniforms and shit, but... Yeah, some of them are, like, guess which community, guess which job in the army has the base reputation for being out there, for being characters? What? Explosive ordnance disposal technicians. Why is that? Just something I've heard, like, apparently, that, that, that job probably just makes them... Let's watch a, a little more of uh, Slab City, the documentary, <laughs> it looks like. <laughs> I mean, this is so good, dude. These people in Slab City are so interesting. And I like, because I hated everything. Like, my life before that was like, it was full of a lot of like sad events, you know, uh, painful memories and things like that. And like, I was still just trying to run away from all that stuff. So I just kind of gave up and I came out of Slab City. I almost died in the desert. I didn't have a purpose. Like, I had lost a kid and life was fucking hard. I got lost in the desert. I was only out here for, for like a month. I was so stressed out and like, didn't know where I was at. I had no water. I was sick as, my headlamp turned off. It was scary. There's a new moon, but no stars. It was dark. I was scared. I was going to dehydrate. Like, she got lost in the desert like a video kinda, like, game. And, and uh, I, my headlamp turned back on. I was just beating it against my knee, and there wasn't anything following me, and I could see, like, I was crying before I could see anything. Like, I could finally, like, see through my tears and, and see, like, the, the town lights so I knew where I was going to go. And I went to friends of Boston, just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. A bit of my ego died, I think, is what happened. Because, I mean, I felt like a new person after that. Maybe I need to go lost in the desert again. <laughs> Find yourself again. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's when I found purpose. You know, I started playing music and started like loving stuff, you know, and, and looking forward to things. And especially, you want to know something crazy is that my sister said that while she was growing up and was around this girl, that she went to all of the high academy schools and she was ridiculously smart. She was like one of the smartest people that my sister knew. And then she. <laughs> she did this. Something must have happened music. in between because remember she she was also a marine wife and yeah. So some happened previous to that. She was really smart and then it kind of came out of her. Like the you, the bad. Maybe there was undiagnosed mental health issues at some point. Something S like that. Maybe some traumatic event or more multiple traumatic events. It's kind of sad, but it's. I can't stop watching it. Music, I, like that's that is such a great outlet, and that's one of the things I want to like inspire people to do is to play music so that they can express themselves and really be who they're supposed to be. You know, it's so much simpler. Like, it's so much simpler. It's and when shit is simple, it's better. It's simple. I don't know. You get more time to focus on you, focus on who you want to be. You know, to be inspired. To be inspired to express yourself, to be exactly who you're supposed to be. That's it. Wow. I'm wondering how long she'll stay out there. Dude, she's been out there for like a decade, I think. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, isn't that one of the craziest things ever? And I'm, I'm, my sister, my full sister is friends with this lady. Wow, I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm, okay, I mean, I don't Merry know Christmas to everyone. I mean, I just gave everyone the greatest show to watch on YouTube. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. <laughs> Filthy Animal, yeah, that was a transparent reference to Home Alone. They didn't, weren't, didn't they look like filthy animals living out in the desert uh, in a garbage heap? Animals that made efforts to clean themselves up from time to time i mean they didn't look like they they didn't look like you the, the the like homeless like 
No, they weren't homeless because they had like campers and vehicles and they'd build like they grab like lumber out of the out of the desert and build like patios and backyards out of like random fallen trees. <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh good luck to her. <laughs> yeah, very good luck to you. And anyone else that's looking for some good slab city content and you know uh connection to the weirdest things in the world, like North Korea, people stealing Noel that live on random websites like Munsoft Recovery. Right, Anthony? Yeah. Uh again, the people of Denmark and Kyrgyzstan, we don't we love that you want to listen, but please listen to it the the normal let me, way. Thank let me you. pull it up and show them. I think I have that up. Right here is where you can find the podcast. If you're looking for our show, you go to MunsoftRecovery.com and you can get episode 11. It's been downloaded 88,000 times. It's got 80,000 reviews. And our rate on MunsoftRecovery.com is 5.8 stars out of 10. And we're our language... uh Barrier stops after English, Norwegian, Kyrgyz, Scottish, Gaelic, Dari, Sasatho, Salaboa, Serbian, and Cyrillic, Serbia. So, yeah, find us there. Munsoftrecovery.com. <laughs> Munsoftrecovery.com is where you could really. Check out the episode and download it to your computer illegally and probably get many viruses. Other than that, you could just go onto your search bar and put in No Outlet Live, one word, and you will find anywhere we are broadcasted like Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Facebook. We're on Instagram, Twitter. We're we're everywhere. We really are everywhere. Right, Ant? Yes. We we'll, see you when you're sleeping. We know when you're awake. <laughs> and that is damn right. We'll be right back. We're about to take a quick break for our sponsors. COVID-19 is spreading profusely. There are hundreds, even thousands of cases occurring each and every day. Here are some ways you can help stop the spread of this devastating virus. First, avoid sharing food and drink with others, even family members. Wear a mask to protect each other and cover your coughs and sneezes with a tissue. With the holidays being right around the corner, we all want to stay safe so we're able to stop this awful disease so we have a better 2021. 96% of adults go to work hungover the day after a holiday party. New Year's has the worst statistics with almost 58% of highway deaths being alcohol related. 40% of highway deaths during the holidays are alcohol related. This holiday, stay home, stay at a friend's or a family's house. Be safe this holiday season, don't drink and drive. Light. 
light up a smoke Flick it into the pile Watch what was once burst up into flames There's a bite in the air Let the fire take hold Cause baby This DJ. Buddy Addison's here to make sweet, sweet love to your ears whenever the fuck I feel, feel like it. it. Tune in to CBW and maybe if you're lucky, I'll be on. Or just invite me over for a good time. <laughs> we'll warn you right now. Things may get a little fucked up and crazy. What's even worse is I had a kid come in and I was shitting in the urinal and he came in and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but if that's something you're into, then Mike's and Men is the show for you. The boys are going to cover it all without holding back. You're going to laugh, you're going to cry, and you could learn a thing or two. It's Mike's and Men, only on CBW. Have you ever wondered where to get the hands-on training to be on the radio or even on the news? Ohio Media School. Take the quiz online on the website beonair.com to see if media broadcasting is the right field for you. Learn by doing is the school style. We know there is no substitute for operating the tools of broadcasting under the direction of broadcast professionals. The classes and studio sessions are run with the same professional informality that is found throughout the broadcast industry. Ohio Media School, 216-503-5900 or visit the campus at 9885 Rockside Road, Independence, Ohio. Ohio Media School, where broadcasting dreams become reality.
fucking pathetic, dude. Get the fuck out of my face. I stole a I completely did all of that wrong. So, <laughs> let me uh, <laughs> let me restart this here. One moment. <laughs> the jury will now disregard the no previous outlet, statement. But I need to charge my phone. No outlet lies. That's really how I wanted to start. After the break, I accidentally pushed. One of our intros for Stolen Valor, but we don't have no more early Stolen Valors. But we have had an excellent show going on so far. Would you agree? Yes. Yes, I would. The interview with Andrew Eminger, that was amazing. We have gone over Slab City, the our friend, a friend of a friend and family of a friend and friend of family, uh, Jinxy Bonesaw on YouTube. Yeah, that was interesting. That was very interesting. Now, I want to jump in to something. Hold on. I got to throw off the hat. I got to throw off the hat because now we're about to get real. We're about to really jump into some serious No Outlet Live archive kind of stuff right here. Are you excited? Because I think Christmas came early. And that's a literal... It, sorry, I'm just thinking of the Bond girl from that uh, Pierce Brosnan movie, The World Is Not Enough. Who, she was named Christmas Jones. So, A couple of weeks ago, I made a promise with you, and we shook hands, and I told you that I was going to build you up three dates. And once again, I thought you'd been hitting the head, but I just played along. No, no, no. I was not hitting the head, and... And I got to tell you that tonight, I promised you last week that I have one date, your first date. I know all that live here tonight. You could deny or you can jump into the fun. It's up to you. Okay. Are you excited? Yes. Yes. So who I'm going to bring into the show is Tessa Jackson. She is 28. She has been a veterinary technician. Or no, she's studying to be a veterinary technician. Okay. She really loves long walks in the house. She is a big fan of Cobra Kai. She loves uh, Joe Rogan. Okay. She is into fitness, and she really likes dancing. Okay, those last two are good thing, and uh, I can work with it. Um, I'm white and usually sober, so dancing is not really compatible. Now, we talked last week about dancing. Now, if this girl wanted to go out and have a dance... That's a maybe. Like, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, so we are about to get there. Are you excited? We are about to meet your first date live on the show. No all that live. Anthony Miano is going to meet his first date from J. Remy. I lined it up for you. Okay? okay. Tessa Jackson. Give me one moment. Go ahead and uh, let us tell us about your expectations and what you what you feel while I go and grab her. Okay. Uh, hmm. I could just say anything I want right now, and I wouldn't, and I don't even have to cut Jeremy off to say it. I don't know what to say. I have no idea what to expect here. Uh, I've watched a lot too much TV and movies over the years, so I, I'm imagining some uh, misunderstandings, some funny incidents will occur. Uh, like that, that Frasier where he brought his b new boss home to meet Daphne because the new boss liked the British, but uh, he didn't know that the new boss was gay and the boss thought Frasier was interested in him. But this is real life and not TV, although I do realize we're being watched right now, so. Hi. 
you know what? Andrew isn't going to have to punch you because I will. So we have Tessa Jackson in studio right now. She really loves long walks in the house. She is a veterinary tech. And it looks like her nipples are really hard right now. <laughs> so when it comes to dancing... What do you really like, Tessa? What kind of dancing do you get into? She she seems like a, a real bell of the ball. Now, if you meet her with a sucker in her mouth, what do you think? Sorry, my brain crashed from the... Is ludicrousness a real word? <laughs> ludicrousness might actually be a word. Do you like Tessa? Do you think this will be a date that can last? Are you going on the date? Now, how do you feel about Tessa? Well, uh, she's not very articulate, uh, I gotta say. Uh... <laughs> See, <laughs> She really isn't. She hasn't really said much. I think she's a little camera shy. Yeah, that's one way to put it. But if you do look at it, she's got some real creamers on her, don't she? Yeah, and, you know, as usual, my first instinct was there's no way those are real. No. <laughs> Oh, man. So, I think she has a 32 double D. She is about five foot. She's not a very tall girl. Most women aren't tall. Plus, I've, yeah. been, I've been turned down by women shorter than I am for being too short. Go figure. It seems like she doesn't have too much um, movement in her elbows or whatnot. But she is a dateable girl, I believe. Well, you can believe it all you want. That won't make it true. <laughs> now, are you, do you, you, you don't want to go on a date with Tessa or you are very encouraged to go on a date with Tessa? I, am, am I supposed to play this straight here or what the fuck is going on? <laughs> So this is the first date. She is willing to go on a date with you. She she is a very willing participant. Um, this is the first date that you have on Noah Let Live. Speechless. Yeah, let's go with that. Look at her nipples, though. Okay. Uh, once this or once this. This or once this operation gets bigger than just the two of us, um, we're gonna have a sign. Up that says, <laughs> Does it feel weird? <laughs> no, but follow that under hashtag words you're not allowed to say. I mean, what do you want to say? You can say it. Well, no, no, it's more like um, it's like I said at work once. You want to know why we have these those sexual harassment seminars every year? <laughs> this. <laughs> that is right because this is no outlet live <laughs> sorry so, is the tone mate is that you, you took the tone when you, you normally have before we go on a break yeah sorry no we're not going on a break now from the tone that you have see I brought on the tone that was going on break because I felt a little weird but we're going to continue on with it. Uh, do you decline or accept a date with Tessa? I, I, I got I to decline. Uh, Are you sure? 
Yes. <laughs> All right. So, sorry, Tessa. You will not get your date with the infamous Anthony Miano. From there, we are going to move on into a nice big deal of news. What do you got in store for us right now? Well, you ever heard of anybody that would be willing to go to jail for a Whopper? What? We were just talking about Whoppers last week. Yeah, so Burger King, you're getting some free pro- some free pu- pr- press from us yet again. Uh, you want to pr- pull up the story of the... Uh... Let's get into it. No Outlet Live News with Anthony Miano. What if the universe is trying to... You know what, I'm going to have to go to Burger King sometime soon just to get it out of my system because I feel like maybe there's like some under... Like, I keep getting drawn into stories involving Burger King. <sighs> yeah, uh, so earlier this week, on midnight Wednesday, December 8th, a man who was out on bond went to Burger King because he was hungry as hell. <laughs> yeah, he did. This is in Michigan. Yeah, Washtenaw County. Washtenaw. At least I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, so this guy entered the exclusion zone of the court ordered GPS ankle monitor to go to Burger King, and a judge issued a warrant for his arrest on Thursday the 9th. Oh, he, he got a sh- warrant for a whopper? Well, no, he was. So, you got to read a little bit, but the reason this guy was under court supervision in the first place is because he's out on bond for one misdemeanor domestic violence charge and one felony charge of false imprisonment. And his lawyers had to say, unironically, my client is not here. He wanted to have it his way. I guess one (laughs) flame-broiled burger was too much for my client to resist. Yeah, he said, well, your honor, sometimes a person is hungry. And, he needed that Whopper bad. And no, no, this, <laughs> yeah, he said, he, the, the, this guy said he forgot don't, don't. about the restrictions. And the, the, the scary part was the victim was informed that this guy was inside the GPS exclusion zone, according to prosecutors. And that is crazy. You got, yeah, uh. <laughs> I I love whoppers. I don't think I could go all the way into uh going to jail over one. Yeah, and so he was out on a fifteen hundred dollar personal recognizance bond. The judge increased his bond to ten thousand, which is probably going to keep him remanded till trial. Because remember, he was he qualified for a public defender, and so and he, this just happened yesterday. Two days, yeah. Uh, I mean, spare a thought for that poor public defender, though. I mean, yeah. when he was in law school, did he ever think he would be saying... He would be say, uttering those words in court in front <laughs> right. of a judge? Uh, the, the one thing I think of that maybe tops this for that I've seen for a lawyer is this old picture of divorce court proceeding where there's these two lawyers sitting on the ground on the floor in front of the tables and they've got these piles of beanie babies next to them beanie babies that's some old school shit yeah so this couple was getting divorced and they were dividing the beanie babies between them and i imagine the the thought i went to law school for this and they're probably even and depending on the prestige of the law school they went to, they were probably even more befuddled. Like, like I have a law de- like say they they went to Yale. I have a law degree from Yale, and I'm sitting on the floor of, in, in court sorting out Beanie Babies. Like, <laughs> yeah, Beanie Babies and Burger King Whoppers. Yeah, I. Sh- <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> what else do you have going on in the news? Well, so a Los Angeles personal injury firm has calculated Homer Simpson's medical tab. Homer Simpson is entangled into this law firm? No, 
not exactly. They they sat down. They've calculated Homer Simpson's accumulated medical bills. Uh, yeah. Okay, so if you go to downtownlalaw.com, that is the company that calculated his medical bills? Yes, and and apparently they're the number one injury law firm in California. And, <laughs> and they spent their hard-earned time to calculate Homer Simpson. Yeah. So uh, let's see here. Uh, he reportedly racked up $143 million in medical bills. Yeah, uh, cor- and according to uh, the top three, and I wasn't able to find the full list, are brain damage, $1.5 million. Do, do. Paralysis, half a million. Woo-hoo! Radiation exposure, 150000 Yeah, and I... <laughs> Yeah. I don't know why I threw that in there. I just had to. Yeah, although Homer did impersonate a Native American once when he got up in charge of Bart's youth group, the preteen Braves. He even puts a headdress on and he plays the drums. I am Homer, tribal chief. I am wearing tiny briefs. Brave speech values boys should know. Now extended drum solo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the dude's been hitting the head so many times. Like he's been So is it these eight people, these are like the law firms. These are these are the people that that have spent their time calculating doing the the, the dividends and all that good financial uh research on Homer Simpson. Yeah, he's uh because they didn't have no real clients. They had to work with a fictional one. Well, what can I? I have no idea <laughs> why they decided to do this. I mean, at least for the other story that they do look like lawyers on hire. Yeah, they're they're very well dressed. Except uh, for half of their names are like uh in from India, Azizi, Farid, Yagbutil. I yeah, I'm Farida probably... Yagbutil. That is straight up uh, Afghanistan. Uh, I, I don't even know, but notice he's got his arms crossed, like yeah, yeah tough yeah, guy. Yeah, like I'm cool. Yeah, but he's they, a tough guy. They are. These other dudes are a little weary, but he's like, I'll punch you in the face and take your money. Yeah, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll sue myself for the injury inflicted by me and win the case. <laughs> it's like that, that South Park where Kyle's dad represented everyone in this big sexual harassment trial. The case of everyone versus everyone. And he yeah. represented both sides. <laughs> yeah. And then he ended up getting Principal Victoria to confess to graphically murdering her husband and trying to dispose of the body. She's like, all right, I killed my husband. I chopped him off with a chainsaw. And then I tried to light his body on fire, but it just wouldn't burn. Principal Victoria. Did sexual harassment occur in your school or not? <laughs> yeah. And then Yeah, it's wild. And then so this story <laughs> reminded me of another story of people calculating some something fictional. Yeah. And what do we got? How much would it cost to build the Death Star from Star Wars? Oh jeez. Hold on. Let me switch over our our audience base. If you're watching the show is live. Starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook. Afterwards, we go on to YouTube. You could catch us the next day, maybe on Sunday or throughout your week. If you want to watch the show, you could catch us on YouTube and Facebook. Other than that, you could find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, or just look us up on your Google search bar or whatever web browser you use. Look up No Outlet Live, one word. So <laughs> let's check out these people that want to build an actual Death Star. I think it's a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, so some economic students at Lehigh University, they, I think, I, I thought they'd been engineering majors. No, they, or maybe I'm getting the two confused anyway. So. Based on external data from the extended universe where, like, they, they looked at, you know... And this is on Forbes. <laughs> Forbes magazine is spending their time figuring out... Well, this came back... This this was 
this was back in 2012, but when I read about somebody calculating the real-life cost of Homer's medical injuries, this came to mind. And incidentally, they're both Disney properties now, The Simpsons and Star Wars. So they calculated that the steel alone would cost $852 quadrillion. Now, that's what this number is, is quadrillion? Yes, yeah, so that is the number 852 with... 15 zeros after it. Yeah, that's crazy. To, 15 to, zeros. To, to go, to get to the quadrillions, that's what's after trillions. Or roughly 13 times, 13,000 times the entire world's gross domestic product, which is basically how much money a country has. And yeah, that, that's wild. And that's just the cost of the steel. And they've calculated that at then rates of steel production, about 1.3 billion tons annually, it would take 833,315 years to produce enough steel to begin work. (laughs) So once someone notices what you're up to, you have to fend them off for 800 millennia before you have a chance to fight back while building... The Death Star. Yeah, and I, I I don't think anyone ever would build this, even if it were feasible within a lifetime, <laughs> just simply because there is no way you would ever get a, a big enough return on that investment to justify it. Unless somewhat, uh, 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 unless you can, it would be like the intergalactic equivalent of a hitman so they could be like, <laughs> All right. yes, there is a planet next to my planet that is blocking my, that is blocking my, the sun. I want to work on my tan. And so what do you want me to, I want this planet removed. Like, like, you know, the, you've seen in the movies people arranging contract killings. Like, maybe imagine someone arranging a contract hit on a planet out there somewhere yeah that that's a crazy thing to even try to get a concept of it in your mind now what people in the second death star from the star wars movies though that might actually be a little bit more useful in real life you know why (laughs) why is that well because they refined the super laser in between the movies now the original death star hold on did they yeah, the original Death Star, the super laser, the thing that blew up planets, could only it it was only accurate enough to hit planet-sized targets, and it had like a twenty-four hour recharge period. Oh, you're right. Yeah, so you are right. So when they they built the second one, it was only about two thirds completed by the events of Return of the Jedi, but they had it refined and improved. So that it was accurate enough to target ships. It's been a little bit since I watched them, but I do watch that series of the Jedi, uh, the Skywalker series. I watch that every May. Wow, you! Uh, if you mean the episodes seven, eight, and nine, you shouldn't have. But that's a separate. That's a separate. No, I got all of them. It's like nine movies. Anyway, yeah, and and the second Death Star super laser could be recharged within minutes. Another thing you could recharge in minutes is No Outlet Live. This has been the show that is broadcasted throughout six countries, six languages, six different areas where you could find us, or maybe more. You definitely will find us if you look us up in your web browser. No Outlet Live, one word. We are brought to you by FlathousePress.com. If you make your... Uh, Christmas purchase right now you use that promo code you will get 15% off on whatever you buy and we're also brought to you by Guardian Roadside Solutions if you come to them you can get yourself a good old fashioned car detailing because the inside of your car gets all stinky after you've had the windows closed and it's winter time is Really bad for your car. And hopefully after this wind, you still have windows. 
Yeah, definitely. I don't know if Guardian Roadside can help you with tornadoes, but if the inside of your car is bad, they could detail it. And also, if you're stuck on the side of the road, they'll get you back running again. You looked like you wanted to say something, Anthony. Peace <laughs> out, A-Town. Peace like... out. Peace up, A-Town usher, down. Uh, usher, you haven't used that one in over a decade. I'm taking it. <laughs> this has been No All That Live. And um, just so anyone who's listening knows, and also you, because I don't even think I told you yet, we won't be on next week. I know so, now. Yeah, so you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I forgot to bring it up to you. Next week, we will not be on. But the week after that, I'm back to it. And we will be giving you the best of the best of the best. Happy holidays. Uh, Merry Christmas. Thank Jesus. Thank baby Jesus. I'll be back. I'll be back. This has been No Outlet Live. Have you ever wondered where to get the hands-on training to be on the radio or even on the news? Ohio Media School. Take the quiz online on the website beyondair.com to see if media broadcasting is the right field for you. Learn by doing is the school style. We know there is no substitute for operating the tools of broadcasting under the direction of broadcast professionals. The classes and studio sessions are run with the same professional informality that is found throughout the broadcast industry. Ohio Media School, 216-503-5900 or visit the campus at 9885 Rockside Road, Independence, Ohio. Ohio Media School, where broadcasting dreams become reality. What's up? Jay Remy here, host of No Outlet Live. Are you considering or curious about how you could start your own podcast? Join Anchor. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast for free. Monetize your podcast, one-click distribution, record from anywhere on the app, and they have unlimited free hosting. Download Anchor on the App Store or Google Play. Anchor, podcasting made easy. COVID-19 is spreading profusely. There are hundreds, even thousands of cases occurring each and every day. Here are some ways you can help stop the spread of this devastating virus. First, avoid sharing food and drink with others, even family members. Wear a mask to protect each other and cover your coughs and sneezes with a tissue. With the holidays being right around the corner, we all want to stay safe so we're able to stop this awful disease so we have a better 2021. 96% of adults go to work hungover the day after a holiday party. New Year's has the worst statistics with almost 58% of highway deaths being alcohol related. 40% of highway deaths during the holidays are alcohol related. This holiday, stay home, stay out of friends or a family's house. Be safe this holiday season. Don't drink and drive. No outlet, but I need to charge my phone. No outlet live.